was shown the video. There was people, she said, in the hats, screen hats, and they, and they were from the National Lawyers Guild, which is what they told her. They said it on their hats. They were waiting and watching the protesters being arrested. Thoughts on this and how um, and what might be next at a place like the University of Texas? Well, the National Lawyers Guild is a great organization. They are a group of lawyers, tend to be progressive uh, lawyers in the sense, not necessarily of politics, but of the rights of, of criminal defendants. Uh, they do great work, and they're out there to help the people who are arrested. When I was a young lawyer in legal aid and public defender work, I used to represent what was called the Community for Creative Nonviolence, a big organization that did all these prayer protests against the Reagan administration. We would do the same thing. Well, we had a team of people down there getting names and making sure we understood where they were being taken, because sometimes they get taken to jail, sometimes they get taken to baseball fields and locked up, and so you want to know all of that stuff. And so that's what the Lawyers Guild is doing. So good for them. They're protecting the rights of individuals who are being arrested. So how do you, um, or how do they look at all of this in terms of First Amendment rights versus private property of a university like Columbia, maybe different at a public university like University of Texas? How does it all come together legally? Well, I think it comes together in favor of the First Amendment. You know, as a student who was gassed on my own campus protesting the war in Vietnam, this is hmm. something which raises personal, you know, recollections. And what school did I you always go to? What, then, what school were you at back then? Back then, I was at American University. Oh, okay. You used to and, teach there, uh, too, we right, at American in D.C. for a while? Yeah. Who would have thunk that I was a, a, a student protester being tear-gassed on Ward Circle and then teaching in the law school all these years later? But the point here is that I thought back then it was a mistake to do this, that we had a First Amendment right uh, to do this. I think the same thing now. And I think the Mayor of the Washington, D.C., uh, Muriel Bowser, is doing the right thing and not calling the police in. There's no point in escalating these things further. We've seen this over and over. This is what led to Jackson State and Kent State, where students were killed. Um, these are First Amendment rights that should be protected, especially in universities, whether it's a private university or a public university. It doesn't matter it's if it's overreach. public or private? That's, there's no distinction there? Well, from my point of view, the First Amendment should protect these protesters, whether they're at a public or private university, more so at a public university, perhaps in a private university, right. because it is a public university. And after all, where else do you have your rights to protect just for speech to be protected more than the public square? What about so at Columbia, we're looking at the um, a shot from up on. Uh, the Upper West Side of Manhattan right now, outside the gates of Columbia. But, you know, they set this deadline 2 o'clock where they wanted the tenant encampment to be uh, to be gone. Now, I know they haven't enforced it yet, but when they did that, Michael, they put out, they said, there's a bunch of rules being violated. I'm looking at it now. They, they put out a list of the rules. So it was like the rules of university conduct. There's rules against disruptive behavior. There's other violations of campus uh, policy, vandalism, damage to property, that type of thing, harassment and or the violation of Columbia's non-discrimination statement. So they put this list out. So if people are in violation of those rules, they can be they can be removed, right? I, I suppose by university officials or disciplined in some way. But, you know, Columbia, of all places, should know better. They had uh, student protests with Student for Democratic Society and Mark Rudd back in the 1960s. They did the same exact thing, and it led to all sorts of disastrous consequences for Columbia reputationally and otherwise. So you'd think that they would have learned something. After all, they're an Ivy League school, but they appear not to have, and they somehow create these artificial rules that they then turn around and enforce against students who are protesting and exercising their First Amendment rights. These should be learning experiences. These should be the basis for teach-ins and, and other things quite like that, mm. not mass arrests. What I don't about, know what I mean, they have graduation coming up, though, right, Michael? So that lawn at Columbia, I think that's where they have the graduation. So what are they supposed to do, just leave them there and cancel it? Or what are you suggesting? Well, I'm not in charge of Columbia University. It's a big place. There are a lot of um, convention halls in New York City. They can hold it at Madison Square Garden or uh, in, in um, any of the major parks. They could go to... Um, Central Park and, and hold this, or Battery Park and hold this, or Morningside Park, which is right next to Columbia University, to say that, oh my gosh, this is the only place that we can do this, and therefore we've got to clear you, it doesn't make sense to me. Now, that all said, I do think that they have a, the students who want to take their exams have a right to have those exams and graduate if that's what it's required for graduation or whatever in order to complete their course of study. So they should have an obligation to 
protect those students who want to continue and not be part of the protests. But we're talking mostly about now what to do about these protesters. And I think I've made myself clear that I am not supporting, we're not talking about the issue. I'm not talking about whether the Israeli forces in Gaza are right or wrong. I'm not taking a position on the, the merits of it. I'm talking about the First Amendment right to protest. Michael, thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.